best, you, best pub crawl in the world is in Dublin. Yeah, but I mean, there's more to it than fucking drinking. Like, yes, you know sir. what I mean? Yes, Christ. Yes, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's that right. Yeah, of course. You have yeah. the storehouse, you have the Guinness. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, on that, can I ask, um, was there any specific performance that made you select Tom Von Lawler for Ebony Maw? Uh, no, I mean, no, we, he, he, uh, he auditioned for the part and his audition was incredible and, you know, he's an amazing actor and we were very fortunate to get him, but he, uh, he actually created a character that, uh, that, uh, you know, is getting a lot of attention. People are very excited by his portrayal of Ebony Maw. Mm. Any yeah. thoughts, sir? Yeah, no, he, he, look, we had an, uh, Tom, he's, he, Tom pro portrays a character that's partially built through visual effects, sure, primarily yeah. built through visual effects work. So it was a very involved process working with him. It's like the actors almost uh, uh, operate as puppet masters. Yeah. They have to very much understand what the final version of the character is. We go through a long process of them getting comfortable with that. And yeah, Tom brought an amazing uh, performance to the character, really, really skilled and uh, it really Breathe life into yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, something that could kind of get lost in Oh, CGI, yeah. 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 Made it very special. Um, in terms of, I suppose, kind of films that have a similar tone, because I remember when I talked to Sebastian Stan about Civil War, he kind of mentioned Godfather Part Two, And, you know, obviously Winter Soldier had kind of three days at a condor. Yeah. Anything with this? Yeah, I mean, we always look for inspiration because we like mushing genres together. And I think, you know, when we talk about films that we're inspired by, it doesn't necessarily mean structurally. It just sure. means a spirit, a je ne sais quoi about that movie. Uh, two movies in particular that we, because we, we perceive this movie as sort of a smash and grab heist film, uh, as Thanos is collecting the stones, so Out of Sight and Two Days in the Valley, early 90s, uh, you know, uh, genre heist ensemble movies. Out of Sight, the yes, Steven Soderbergh, Steven Soderbergh movie. movie, Wow, yes. cool. Yeah. Um, how do you kind of, I suppose, service the various kind of characters and their own kind of unique visual palette. Like, as in, obviously, Black Panther had a real kind mm -hmm. of gorgeous color, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, all the you know all the other characters. I mean, how do you kind of do that, but then kind of maintain your own vision at the same time? Is it a case of just servicing everything one by one? Or yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, and figuring out how. I mean, look, we've always described like our our creative processes. Like, we think of ourselves as mad scientists, where you're like combining sort of disparate elements and sort of seeing how they combust together and work together. And that's part of the pro, pro, big part of the process of how we work as directors and storytellers and filmmakers. So. Um, it's hard to describe it because it's very yeah, complicated, sure. you know, it, and we do take it one step at a time. But yeah, at the end of the day, what's what is very important to us is that we are giving the audience a very unique and singular experience in this film that is very much about this film. And th while it's based on and built on all this emotional capital that they've formed with these characters and what they've come to know about them on a tonal level, stylistic level, etc., we are trying to bring it to life in a way that is unique and different. Any thoughts? Yeah. Huh? No, I think you nailed <laughs> kind it. Of got yeah. it. Um, do you see yourselves kind of keeping on with kind of blockbusters like this? Do you want to go back to kind of smaller stuff? I what? think we, you know, throughout our careers, we've we've moved in between uh, mediums. We've done comedy, we've done drama, we've done big, we've done little. We started off as indie filmmakers, did a lot of television. Uh, and I think we're just going to continue to diversify. You know, that's the most interesting thing to us. However, we do love these films. I grew up collecting comic books, started when I was eight, and that stories that have an emotional impact on you as a child tend to stay with you throughout your life. So uh, we understand the mythology behind these characters, the resonance, and they reach a very wide audience in a way that's important. And we think, feel like we can get strong thematics in these movies as a, you know, to incite conversation. Winter Soldier was about the dangers of the surveillance state, and mm. now we've got Cambridge Analytica and Facebook, and you know. Um, so I think, uh, uh, I think uh, it would be imp it's going to be important for us to continue to make these kinds of films. However, I do think that we'll be doing lots of stuff in between. You just mentioned there's something about kind of thematics and yeah. kind of having a real world application. Do you think there's one in Infinity War? Uh, without question. I mean, I think that the the theme of that movie and and it's impossible for us to work on a script if we don't know what the theme is. So we tend to sit down and write the theme out as the first thing. Uh, is how how uh, what does it cost to be a hero in a complicated world? Uh, and does the um, the value of doing what's right outweigh the cost of what it costs to do what's right? Or you know what what you know what? Um, what and, and in particular, I think Thanos demands a high cost. So I think the characters in this film have to decide, uh, you know, what uh, is doing what's right worth uh, what it's going to cost them to do that. And so um, I think we're, you know, it's topical in that I think we live in a complicated world, and sure, yeah. and I think uh, we're looking to people to make the right choices regardless of. Uh, of the cost in this world.
Yeah, and then kind of not actually understanding the ramifications of what that costs. Yeah. Exactly. When I'm done, half of humanity will still exist.